Yo, what is going on everybody? It is Tyler here and today I am bringing you another video and I will finally be reacting to Call of Duty Champs from last weekend. So yeah, I just apologize that I didn't get this out sooner, man. It's just been a long week at work. It's just tough, man. Getting home late and just only having a few hours to, you know, relax, make dinner, all that good stuff. So finally able to get this video done. I actually tried to do this yesterday and there was something wrong with my uh, snowball microphone, something wrong with the, said there was a driver error, so I recorded the whole video not realizing that it wasn't recording the microphone, so oh well, we uh, give it another go today and we'll go ahead and get into it, man. Uh, I will also follow up at the end of my little champs reaction here. I will be going over some early roster mania talk and there's even more stuff coming out right now as I do this, but either way, let's get into it, man. Uh, so winners round one, day one, man, it was insane. I was absolutely perfect with my pick and predictions. Had all the winners right and had all the exact map counts correct, man. So I was feeling pretty good, man, about my predictions. First day had everything exactly correct. And that was all for just an absolute blow up after that. After that, I got dang near everything wrong, literally. Like every series after that I got wrong. The next four was insane. The second day, got them all wrong. But either way, we'll start with day one, man. Winners round one, FaZe beat Surge 3-1. to one. You know, FaZe look dominant. Surge, you know, they steal a map. They get the control in there. But FaZe, you know, they look pretty good in that series. Uh, Ultra, they beat Thieves 3-2 to two in what was a very good series, man. I've kind of figured, you know, one of these teams would possibly make a run here. That'd be an Ultra. And they were able to do that. But, uh... Yeah, they get the victory here in round one, three to two over Thieves. Optic, they beat Boston three to one. Uh, Snoopy man in his first ever professional match looked pretty solid, actually, man. He looked pretty good, man. It's pretty wild, you know. First professional matches, you have to show up to champs and try to get it done. Only been scrimming with the team for a couple of weeks, and you know he looked pretty solid, man. But either way, Optic come out on top three to one as they advance to winners round two. And the last winners round one matchup was New York against Rocker, man. Rocker absolutely bottled this one, dude. This could have changed the whole entire tournament. If Rocker did not blow this, they were up 2-0. They won the first HP. They won the SND. They're up 2-0. And then New York, man, they absolutely turned up and pulled off the reverse sweep. Got the job done, 3-2. So, yeah, like I said, this whole tourney would have been a completely different if Rocker did not blow this 2-0 lead. And New York, they move on to play Optic and winners round two. So we'll talk about those matches as we had Optic taking on New York. New York get the job done 3-1, to one, man. Uh, it was a tough series to watch, man. Optic absolutely blew that game four hard point on Hydro, man. They would have had it done. They were just a few points away, and Hook was in broken and decided to push up instead of just sit there. If he would have just sat there and waited, he would have seen Kismet and had a free kill. And instead... He doesn't see him slip through, and Kismet pulls off a two-piece, and they get the job done. Optic, man, just at the end of the year, some crazy, stupid mistakes, man. It's It was rough to watch. The other winners round two matchup, we had Ultra against FaZe. I had FaZe winning this one, but Ultra's able to get the job done 3-1. to one. They looked really good in this series, man. I was kind of surprised, but either way, man, Ultra move on to set up a matchup in the winners' finals of Toronto Ultra against New York Subliners. So we'll move on down to the loser's bracket side of this. As we had loser's round one, Surge against Thieves. This was a big surprise. Upset victory for Surge, taking down Thieves 3-2, to two, man. They clutch up in that last search and destroy. Thieves, man, get top eight of champs. That is very tough to see. Definitely expect that team to be making some changes moving forward. And I'm very surprised at the, you know, the way they went out this season. Did not look too good at the last stage as well. And then they show up to champs. Get double first rounded. But yes, Surge move on to losers round two. Definitely a good showing from them. Definitely uh, very surprised. And I'm also surprised by the other losers round one matchup. Boston take down Rocker 3-1. to one. So this is kind of a little bit of a rivalry ever since the whole Rocker home series. Boston EQ cheese situation. And, you know, Boston, they show up and they finally take down Rocker without the EQ. And Beans was letting them know, man. He was talking that crap after the match, took off his headset, pointing at it, shouting at him and stuff. You know, I'd love to see it. It's funny. But, yeah, Boston take down Rocker 3-1, to one, man. And 
Rocker, just a lot of weird decisions from them this season. They, uh, I believe, moved on from their coach, Saint. They uh, released him uh, just a few days ago. So we'll see, you know, what changes they make going forward to try to, you know, get a little better consistency throughout the year and just, I don't know, they got to stop making such weird decisions out there. But yeah, moving on to losers round two, you see an Optic lose to New York to drop down to play Surge. And once again, Surge surprised everybody, and they take down Optic 3-2, to two, man. Optic, again, just completely blew it. Did not show up in the Surge and Destroy. Surge won both from 6-2, to two, and you just can't have that. You have to have your Surge on if you want to win these series, especially on these big stages like this. And Optic getting whacked in both Surge and Destroys was all this series needed for Surge to move on to losers round three. Optic man going forward, they definitely got to make some changes. Uh, yeah, just not a good performance from them to end the year. Phase, they beat Boston in the other losers round two matchup. Three to one, the final score there. And Phase, you know, they look dominant. Boston was able to steal one map. But either way, Phase get the job done and move on to play Surge in losers round three. And their Phase take down Surge once again. Second time of the tourney going down 3 1 there. And Phase move on to the losers' finals. You know, they look pretty good, man. That was one of the favorites going into the tourney. I mean, all year long, them guys were top three. Won an event, got a top two, so you just expect them to be there every time. And they get to the losers' final for yet another top three and a chance to get to the grand finals. So we'll move on there to the end of the tourney. Winner's finals, you had Ultra against Subliners. And Ultra came out hot, man. Absolutely slammed them. 3-0. Brought the brooms out for the sweep. Ultra secured their spot in the grand finals at COD Champs, man. Yeah, New York did not look good at all in this series, man. Uh, getting into Saturday evening there. And Toronto, man, they definitely slammed them. Scrappy was talking some crap after the game as well, and... We'll see, uh, you know, how that came back to bite them in the end. As New York dropped down to the losers' finals to take on FaZe. And New York, man, they show up. Pretty dominant 3-1 win there for them as they knock out FaZe. Showing that that result from Major 5 Grand Finals was the correct one. They definitely uh, were the better team, man. Taking out FaZe once again. 3-1 to score there. As they secure their rematch in the Grand Finals with Ultra. And New York, man, the subliners, they absolutely showed out 5-0. I'm not sure if we've ever seen a 5-0 in a best of nine, man. One of the fastest best of nine series you will ever see. New York absolutely slammed them. And the maps weren't even that close other than I think one of the hard points was somewhat close. But other than that, New York just absolutely blew them out in this series. 5-0, subliners win champs, ultra go down. Tough, tough uh, showing from them, especially after 3 0 on the night before in that winner's final. But yeah, either way, subliners are your champs. Uh, Hydra, he got the season MVP, which was very uh, well deserved. And Kismet got the MVP for the tournament. So yeah, man, they definitely showed up, showed out. Uh, Scrappy got the rookie of the year. Uh, you had uh, the couple all star teams were very good. The first team, I believe, was uh, Scrappy, Selium. Abizi and Hydra, so very good. That makes a lot of sense. I think that's who everybody would have as their first team. Then the second team, pretty much no argument here either. As you had Dashy, Shotzi, and then was it Pred and Octane? Yeah. So yeah, those two teams, very, very good. All stars, well deserved. But yeah, man, uh, I'll mention my fantasy team real quick. I'm breaking point. It did not do well. It was actually my worst fantasy team yet. But, uh, yeah, that's all I'll say on that. I had a team that was kind of centered around Optic. Also had a Rocker play in, in there. So, them getting double first round did not help. Slasher in there got a solid amount of points for me. For me but, other than that, it was uh, not a good team for me. Over there on the Breaking Point Fantasy. But, you know, we end the year, man, watching some good COD. I mean, the Grand Finals could have been a lot better. But, either way, the tourney itself is pretty good, man. Surge, very surprised to see them get that top four. And like I said, man, that first round where Rocker blew that 2-0 to New York, that series, man, if New York or if Rocker just closed that out, we're talking about a completely different tournament, man. Who knows what would have happened. But yeah, man, uh, yeah, that's it for my reaction to champs, and I'll move on 
to the roster mania talk, a little early roster mania talk here for the 2023 off season. And yeah, uh, tonight, I mean, depending on when you watch this, I'm doing this late Sunday. So tonight's the deadline for teams to let their players know if they are picking up their options to retain them for the next season. And I actually have the contracts pulled up right here from uh, Jacob Hale on Twitter. He does a very good job with news and whatnot with, within the league. So good uh, little table here from him showing all the teams and the contracts and whatnot. So these were the contracts for this season. So basically if it says one plus one, that means that they were on the one year with an option after that, which means that they have the option right now the teams have to decide type stuff. If it says option extended, that means that they were already extended after last year. Like this year is their extended year, so they will be free agents after this season. So like Dashy, uh, the whole LA Thieves team, Vegas, as well as Surge, that, those whole teams are all free agents. And then all the 1 plus 1 guys are all going to be notified within the few next few hours if their options have been picked up or not. Actually has been some news in the past hour of some players that have already been notified if their options have been picked up. So we'll talk about that real quick. The Boston Breach uh, will not be bringing back Vivid. He was already on his extension and Vivid's not going to be back. Nero, he is not going to be brought back on the extension. And Awakening also was announced that he won't be brought back. So Snoopy says unclear here, but I think he was just on like a 10-day deal or something like that to end the season. But I do believe that Boston plan on keeping Snoopy going forward and trying to build around him. And it also came out after the news of those options not being extended that Boston is going to be targeting Clayster. So that's very interesting. I was wondering what Clayster would do this upcoming season. I was hoping that he would come back for at least one more year, but thought there would also be some interest there uh, from a coaching aspect from some teams as well as like even in the media and whatnot as an analyst or however you want to put it because he did a very good job he was a guest on the desk at cod champs and he did a very good job i think so i think you know whatever he wants to do after he's done playing i think he'll be able to do well so it'll be interesting to see if he ends up with boston uh so yeah that's it for boston we'll go through all the teams and kind of talk about the situation so phase all their players have to be extended or let go. And I believe that they will definitely extend the big three of a BZ, Simp, and Selium. The question mark here is Slasher. Will they keep Slasher? Will they not make a change? I think there's a good chance they don't make a change, but there's also a very good chance that they will. I'm definitely thinking that if anyone does go, it would be Slasher. And you would try to bring in someone like an Octane, but... I don't know if that necessarily makes the team better by any means. If anything, you maybe try to change the dynamic a little bit. A lot of people have talked about, you know, moving Cell to the main AR and Simp over to the Flex and bringing in a, another, uh, you know, good SMG to pair with a BZ, possibly Pred or Envoy. I think that would probably actually be the best move if you want to make a change. If anything, man, just stay the same because I don't know if you get much better. But uh, if you want to do that role change with Simp to the Flex and bring in a Predator Envoy, I think that team would be pretty dang good. But yeah, other than that, we really haven't heard a whole lot as far as rumors go here. Uh, with the Rocker Man, um, they have all their players have to be extended or they will become unrestricted free agents. I'm expecting a lot of changes here in Rocker, uh, but we haven't really heard much as far as what's being, you know what's going to happen you know what's being decided haven't really heard much out of it the only thing we've heard really from that organization is that they are looking to possibly merge with another org and that could possibly help you know with some costs and you know not have to try to you know get players on cheaper contracts and whatnot speaking of contracts the minimum salary actually just went up i believe it was around like fifty-five thousand, and is now up to fifty-eight thousand. so that's pretty solid for you know minimums you know I'm sure at least half the league's probably on minimums, if not more. And based on some of the news we've heard, it sounds like a lot more people will be uh, cutting back costs, and we will see probably some more players on minimum contracts, or at least close to it. But yeah, other than that, man, haven't really heard much about the Rocker situation. Uh, moving on to New York, this is the one team that I 100% expect to stay the same. 
most of their players on two plus ones, so they will still be back Hydra and Skies for sure. And then Priesta, I'm expecting them to extend that option for another season with him, or if not, they'll just get a new deal done. And Kismet, he has to get a new deal done. I'm sure that they will do that. He is technically unrestricted right now, but I do believe that New York will get a deal done, and I think that they will run back the same team for next season. There's no reason not to. I mean, come on. They were hands down the best team in the league this year, man, winning half the tournaments, three out of the six. You know, they finished the year with back-to-back tournament wins with Major 5 and COD Champs, of course, won Major 1 early in the season. So three out of the six this year. They should definitely run it back and see what they can do, keep going. Uh, you know, they got a good coaching staff. The whole, you know, system they got going definitely works very well. Moving on to the Florida Mutineers, man. They ended the year running that team of Capstool, Brack, Fellow, and Vico. Uh This team, honestly, man, I wish that they would have formed much earlier in the season because at the beginning of the year, remember, they had players like uh, Dave Patty on the team and uh, I think Major Maniac or somebody like that at the beginning of the season as well, and the team just did not look good at all, and... Once they formed this team, they actually looked a lot better. They still weren't great by any means, but definitely a team that is more solid and, you know, could possibly, you know, make some noise and tourneys, you know, make a upset every once in a while. So it would have been nice to see that team a little bit longer this season. But I think that, you know, probably try to keep at least a couple of these guys. Like, I think the SMG duel of Vico and Capsule is very good, but... The main thing with Florida Mutineers is there's been rumors that they are going to be rebranding to the Miami Heretics with the new org coming in, uh, I think Spanish-owned, so apparently the roster would be an all-Spanish roster from what I'm hearing, and Vico would be a part of that, with a few other guys that have been in Challengers, and you know, they're all good players that I've watched and whatnot, so it'd be interesting to see if that actually ends up happening, but either way, as far as the contracts go, depending on what's going on with the team, I'm sure that if the Miami Heretics thing is happening, that none of these options will be extended. Brack technically still on contract for next season, but I'm sure some sort of buyout will happen if the Miami Heretics is being formed instead. But if that doesn't happen, I think that, you know, Brack being on contract still kind of hurts because if anything, that'd be one guy you'd want to move on from, probably him or Fellow. Uh, fellow still a solid player, man. It's just he's past his prime at this point. So I don't know if anything you try to build around those SMGs and see what you can do. But yeah, other than that, man, we'll see what goes on with the Miami Heretics and if that ends up happening or not. And that will probably decide the fate for most of those players. Uh, moving on to Vegas, like you see there, all option extended for these guys. That means that they are all unrestricted free agents. So TJ, you know, he's been playing for quite a while at this time. I'm sure he'll still find a place in the league, but I don't see him being on, like, any top team by any means. So we'll see what ends up happening with him. Standy, I definitely don't expect him to be back with Vegas, but I'm sure that he'll find a spot somewhere else. But where that will be, I'm not completely sure. Um, I might mention a thing later on when we reach another team and some rumors there. But other than that, Standy, not really sure. Where he's going to end up, Temp, not sure where he'll end up. Uh, If anything, Vegas might keep him around. I think they, like, if anything, that'd be the one player that they'd keep because I'm expecting a whole new squad. But if not, Temp could be the one to stick around. But, yeah, I think Temp definitely still has a couple years left in the tank there. So see what ends up happening with him going forward. And then Clayster, of course. We talked about already the Boston rumors that just came out here Sunday night. So, yeah. Apparently Boston Stark and Clayster. Other than that, I haven't really heard too much from him. I know, you know, retirement was a possibility with him, but I wasn't thinking that he would. You know, just give us one more year, man, and then, you know, ride off into the sunset, do whatever you got to do. It'd be cool to see him get one more tournament win, but, you know, depending on what his team ends up being will determine if I want that to happen. But <laughs> either way, man, Clayster, good career. Uh, but yeah, moving on to the LA Gorillas. More rumors here, man. Uh, you know, their org, like, soul or completely wiped the whole, like, every worker or whatever. They got all new workers and whatnot. So we don't know if they'll, they will be sticking around in the CDL. But from what I've heard, it sounds like they will be around for at least one more season. But it is still not confirmed. So we're not sure exactly what will happen with this team. Uh, all the players have to have options extended. Um, I would let Exceed and Assault go for sure. Uh, Joe Deceives, I'd probably try to 
bring back. He was a rookie this past year, and I think he actually played really well for this team being so bad and whatnot. So, yeah, try to bring Joe Deceives back. But if anything, does he even want to come back type deal? So he might want to try to, you know, move on, see if he can upgrade uh, to a better roster for himself going forward. So we'll see what goes on there. And Arcides, he'll still be on contract for next season. So he had a rough year, man. It's tough to see, you know, it seemed like he had some personal things going on behind the scenes. So we'll see if he can regain for next season and, I know I've, we've heard from him that they haven't really told him anything. He keeps asking, and they won't really give him an answer on what they're doing going forward. So definitely it will be interesting to see what happens with this Gorillas team and the roster in the off season. Moving on to the Seattle Surge, I'll start with the little rumors of them relocating. It's possible that the Seattle Surge will be moving to Vancouver, which makes sense because their organization is actually based out of Vancouver, I believe. So, yeah, it's not very far from Seattle as well. So, I mean, they're pretty similar if you ask me. It's like one's just the American version, the other one's the Canadian version. It's similar cities, but, yeah, up there in the western side of the continent. But, uh, yeah, so Seattle Surge, all their players are unrestricted free agents. Pred, obviously, one of the best players in the game. That's the first domino that people really need to see fall. Before, you know, the rest of the teams start getting filled out, once Pred makes his decision, I'm sure the other teams will definitely, you know, start to, you know, finalize what their moves are going to be. Mac, I'm really not sure what he'll end up doing. I think he'll still end up on a team, but he's got to, like, play a different sort of role. Still on the SMG, but just needs, like, a different sort of system to play in to be successful, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's just a rough year for him, so we'll see. Uh, I think he'll end up on a squad, but... Probably won't be with as good of players that he was with here with Pred and then Sib, but bringing up Sib, we'll go to him, man. I think he actually fell off quite a bit this year. Still a solid player for sure, but that rookie year he had in Vanguard, man, he looked really good. So a lot of the people thought that, you know, Pred and Sib would end up being a package deal this offseason, which is definitely still possible, but I don't think it's as prevalent now with Sib, you know, not performing as highly as he did a year ago, but still, you know, a good player, and I still think some teams will definitely be targeting him going forward. Accuracy, man, it's been a been a good career, dude, but I think you should probably retire at this point. You know, he's been playing for quite some time now, and he's he's been good, man. He's a good player and whatnot, but at this point, it's just past your time, man, so I think accuracy actually could probably get into a coaching role or if he even wants to do anything with Cod after he's done playing, I'm not sure, but accuracy Seattle should probably move on from him and he should probably just, you know, retire, man. Just it's been a good career, dude. It's been a lot of fun watching him, seeing him evolve over time, played a few different roles, but he's been a good player, so we'll see what Serge do going forward. But I'm expecting to see possibly an entire new team or possibly they keep Mac and then bring Gwen in, finally put him on the starting squad and I don't know, we'll see we'll see what they do. But yeah, there's a lot of things that could happen. Of course the Vancouver move with them uh as well. So we'll see what happens with Surge in the next few days. Uh also speaking of the next few days, I did mention that tonight is the deadline for the extensions to be announced for teams to let players know if they're using that when you're extension for next season. Um the free agency will officially begin, I think like a week later, I think July third possibly is the date when teams can like officially sign players and whatnot and start to form these teams so keep those dates in mind i'll move on to the next team here thieves the whole squad is unrestricted free agents and with the way they ended the season man i think their whole season honestly was not good outside of their major four win of course they win attorney that's good they got a second at another one but other than that man they were not good this season and with those players, man, they should be doing them much, much better, I believe. But at this point, you're going to see some movement here, I believe. Um, I think, you know, if anything, they probably keep at least one player. Like Kenny, he's been with the Thieves for a while. And I don't know, he had a really bad year. So I don't know what other teams in the league would give him a shot. So th he probably tries, if anything, to stick around with the Thieves. He'll probably take a pay cut, whatever he's got to do. And we'll see what other players possibly stay. But there have been rumors of Envoy and Draza both going together over to Optic to replace Hook and Ghosty. So that's a possibility. I think that 
could possibly well happen. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a sec, but Envoy definitely should be targeted by quite a few teams here that are looking for an SMG upgrade. And Draza as well, man, pretty good flex. I think Draza is a really good player, man. I don't like him as a person, but, you know, he's just, I don't know, he's a turd. But either way, man, he's a really good player, and some teams should definitely look at him as well as Octane. One of the better players in the league, one of the better in-game leaders, best, uh, one of the best at, you know, common, and it's like a human UAV out there, him and Ghosty. Ghosty is like a little Octane, you know, just a younger version of him. But yeah, I think Optic, if anything, I was, before the rumors came out, I was thinking they should get Octane and Envoy as a two-man change, or possibly just bring in Pred as a one-man change for who can just keep Ghosty. You know, Ghosty's young, man, he's 21. And, you know, that'd be a solid player to, like, keep around for a while, try to, you know, just build teams around him, keep a good system going. But sounds like they may be moving on from him and adding Envoy and Draza in there, which, yeah, other than that, uh, with Thieves, haven't heard a whole lot. Um, if anything, Kenny and Octane are most likely to stay. But, you know, who could they bring in to replace Envoy and Draza if they those two are the ones to move on? You could possibly see that Pred Sib combo stay together and go join them. That would be a pretty solid team. Or you could even see Ultra. We'll talk about that real quick. Ultra, I thought, was going to stay together initially. Or possibly just a Hixie change. But then a few days ago, we had the news come out that they actually have some financial issues. So going forward, they are listening to offers for both Kleenex and Insight. As you can see, they are still on contract for next season. So, yeah, if I was scrappy, I'd try to get out of there because like, if you're telling me that Kinex and Inside are going to be gone, Hixie, he's got to get extended, so if they don't do that, he'll be gone. Scrappy, man, he might be in a tough spot next year, so we'll see. Uh, that could definitely uh, change some things with some other teams as well, some plans that they had with this new Ultra News coming out. So we'll see uh, you know, who goes after Kleenex and Insight, see if they stay together as a package deal or if they just you know, go their separate ways. Kleenex and Insight is another two-man combo that could possibly replace Envoy and Draza. So we'll see what they end up doing. But moving over to Optic, of course, we talked about it already a little bit. I initially thought, you know, either a one-man change of just Pred for Hook or you do the two-man and get Envoy for Hook and then bring in uh, Octane for Ghosty is who I was thinking. But Draza, that's, we'll take that as well. You know, you can do either or, whatever works. But yeah, man, I'm sure Optic will definitely have a really good squad next year regardless. Uh, I do want to mention Illy really quick. Uh, he has been linked very minorly. I don't, honestly, I don't know if this one's real, but Illy has been linked to RCDs a little bit, uh, possibly teaming up with him with LAG. Um, I don't know if that'll actually happen or not. So we'll see if Illy, you know, what he ends up doing because a lot of people really didn't know what his plans were going forward because after he was benched from Optic, no one really knew what was going on. No one really talked about it, and there wasn't really any real news out there about it. So other than that, man, uh, Hook, we already know he's not going to get extended. Dashy, uh, he's a free agent, so I'm sure they'll definitely uh, try to rework a deal with him. Definitely want to keep Sh Shotzi and Dashy around and then just get uh, two more in there or possibly keep Ghosty. I would not be against that at all. But yeah, definitely got to replace Hook, man. And, you know, he had a solid year, man. He's a good player. He's had a good career and whatnot. But going forward, we just need something better. Just He's just seemed like he wasn't necessarily comfy in the role that they had him playing. But yeah, other than that, man, I'm sure Optic will definitely fill out a nice roster for next year. Illy, man, uh, we'll, we'll see what ends up going on with him. But moving on, London, the Royal Ravens. I've heard some rumors that they are possibly relocating to Charlotte. So we'll see if that ends up happening. I don't know. That'll be interesting. Either way, I don't think that this team will end up being very good next year. I'm sure that um, it might possibly be a whole new roster as all these players have to get an option extended for next year. And I'm not expecting that to happen. If anything, possibly one player sticks around. But other than that, man, I expect London to be a completely different team next year. But who would even want to go play with them? I don't know. I'm sure we'll see quite a few uh, Challengers players get a shot next season. And, you know, we'll, we'll see, you know, how it goes for some of these lower tier teams. And then Ultra, like I mentioned, you know, the financial issues definitely shaking some things up there for this offseason. But, yeah, uh, Hixie was the only one that needed to get an option extended or not. So we'll probably get that news soon. 
if he's going to be around next year. And then, of course, everyone else still on contract. But with the financial problems, they're listening for offers on Kleenex and Insight. So we'll see if they move on from both or what ends up happening there. If maybe they can rework the deals, I'm not necessarily sure how all those contract structures work within the CDL. But, yeah, Ultraman, that was a team that I thought might stick it out stay the same for next year. We'll see, uh, you know, what they end up doing, but it's definitely going to get shaken up. They also have been uh, talked about as possibly merging with another company, I believe. But, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it, man, for the roster mania. I'm sure I missed a couple of things, but there's been all sorts of different news and leaks coming out lately. So I'm actually going to go check Twitter real quick. Just give me a sec. I'm going to check Twitter real quick just in case any more stuff came out. All right, so nothing really new since I started recording this, so we'll go ahead and wrap it up here, man. But yeah, man, let me know in the comments below what you thought of Champs, you know. Was it a good tourney, man? Did you enjoy it? Well, you know, what teams do you think could have done better or what teams surprised you? And, you know, let me know about the roster mania. What do you think is going to happen? What teams would you like to see formed? Or, you know, what news have you heard? Just, you know, comment below your thoughts and whatnot. Go ahead and slap that like button for me too. I'd appreciate that a lot. And subscribe to the channel if you are new. And as always, have a nice day. Peace.